there's lots of different blur filters in Photoshop for creating all sorts of different effects, but the one that stands out as being the most well known is Gaussian Blur. Now at this stage, you might be asking yourself, why on earth would I want to blur my photos? Well, the reality is that there are many circumstances when working in Photoshop that you may need the assistance of a Gaussian Blur. Some examples off the top of my head could be to change the focus in an image by blurring specific areas that aren't important in order to draw attention to those that are. So it's very similar to just changing the depth of field in your camera. You can actually do that in Photoshop. Um, if you're working with layer masks, for example, Gaussian Blur comes in very handy for softening the effects of the actual mask itself. Or, if you'd like to take the edge off really coarse film grain, or noise for that matter in a photograph, applying Gaussian Blur works like a treat. Let's now take some of the examples that I mentioned above and put them into practice. So here's a photograph that I captured that quite clearly has a large depth of field where the entire image is in focus. Now what I want to do is essentially reduce the depth of field just so it's specific to the car. Now this was shot with a wide angle lens so it's going to work quite nicely. Um, and also so that just along the plane of focus which will be sort of along this area here will be the only areas in focus. And I'll actually I think it'll come up quite nice. So the first thing that I need to do in order to actually create this effect is to duplicate the background layer because essentially that's what I'm going to be applying the Gaussian Blur to. So Gaussian Blur is located up underneath Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now you'll also notice there are a variety of other blur filters here that you can play around with. Um, there, there are some really good ones for creating some really specific types of effects such as motion blur, but for this particular tutorial we're just going to stick to Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to click on that and that'll bring up Gaussian Blur. Now when you first open up the Gaussian Blur dialog box, you'll notice that you only have one option and that is specific to adjusting the amount of pixels for the radius of the blur. Now Gaussian refers to a bell shaped curve that is generated when Photoshop applies a weighted average to the pixels. And as you start to actually reduce the amount of uh, pixels and then increase them, you'll notice that the amount of blur changes quite dramatically. So for this particular um, uh, this particular tutorial, I think I'm going to set my Gaussian blur to about 50 pixels. I think that'll work quite well for this image. You'll also notice that you have a preview uh, window here. If you click on it with your mouse, it'll actually show you at 100% or your chosen magnification by changing the minus and uh, plus icons here, uh, how much blur you're actually applying to the image. You can also use the preview uh, checkbox as well just to sort of give you some indication. So I'm going to stick with 50 and we're going to click OK. So the next thing I essentially need to do is actually create a selection around the areas that I actually want in focus or the areas that I don't want in focus. Either way will work fine. So what I'm going to essentially do here is, is, is create a selection using the lasso tool just for um, efficiency. So you can either press uh, click on it with your mouse or press L on your keyboard to bring that up. And what I'm going to do is basically do a very rough sort of outline around the car. Now it's not going to be perfect and you know you shouldn't really uh, spend too much time on this to make it perfect because we're going to fine tune our adjustment as we go. So I'm just doing it roughly around the actual um, rusty old car. Once we have our selection, what I'm going to do then is actually choose to um, apply it as a layer mask. So what I'm going to do first is I want to invoice, uh, I want to inverse the selection so that these areas are now selected around the outside of the car, so that I can actually go ahead and um, create my layer mask so that only the blur is applied to those areas. Now you'll notice that it's quite a um, coarse mask, meaning that I haven't actually feathered it or anything, but that's not to worry because I'm going to show you a little technique using Gaussian Blur in a minute. So the next thing I want to do is just adjust the uh, actual layer mask so that I also include some other areas. So I'm going to grab a 
um, brush tool. And then from there, I'm essentially going to make sure that you're actually selected on the layer mask here. And what I want to do is also make sure that I have black selected as my um, as my actual paint palette or foreground color. And then I'm just going to increase the size of my brush. And I'm going to start to actually start including other areas of the image that I want to be in focus. So I'm just going to roughly sort of go around some of these areas here. So I'm just adjusting the, the, the actual layer mask. And I think that's, that's not too bad. Now I'm going to change it to white. And I'm just going to pull back a little bit here. And then what I can do is just slightly start to refine my selection that I made there, just touching up some of the uh, edges around the actual car itself. Also, I'll need to touch up just through the actual window because obviously we don't want, whoops, we don't want the background that goes through there uh, to be in focus. And this is just very rough, but you can really spend, you know, a fair bit of time actually adjusting this yourself in the future uh, to get it really precise if you're going to do a really nice print of this type of, um, of this type of image. And once you've done uh, basically what I've done here by blurring some of these edges, you'll also notice that some of these are starting to blur and look a little bit unusual around the outside there, so I'm going to have to touch them up as well. But once I've done this, the next trick to do to make this uh, is to uh, essentially blur the layer mask just to, to actually diffuse some of the edging that I've actually created there. Um, but I will just touch up this corner here. Oh, wrong one. We'll just slightly touch up this corner just a little bit. So as you can see there, that's, that's done a relatively uh, good job of actually creating and centering the focus specific to this car and just around some of the edges here uh, of this plane of focus. And that actually looks quite, quite natural. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is hold down Alt on my keyboard or a PC keyboard, I'll hold down option on the Mac just to bring up my actual layer mask. And what we can do then is if we've got these really coarse edges here, if we don't want coarse edges with our layer masks and we haven't actually taken the time to either uh, reduce the hardness of the brush that we're actually using or the uh, actually feather our selection, what we can do is go to filter and then just as if we were to apply Gaussian blur to an image, we could actually apply it to our layer mask. And you can actually blur your layer mask. So that can be very helpful as well um, in the process of creating layer masks for your images. So I might just give that, say, about 10. So now my computer's actually caught up. I'm going to apply just around 9 or 10 pixels to this particular layer mask just to diffuse some of those coarser edges. So we'll click OK. And then from here, we can just jump back to the image. So as you can see, the image now has a very small depth of field and it looks actually quite good. Now, obviously with a larger resolution file, I'm going to have to go in and actually fine tune my adjust, uh, adjustments that I've actually made. So as you can see there, I've missed out on some areas, but you get the general idea for how to go about and actually implement some of these techniques for your photographs. So as you can see, Gaussian Blur can be used for a variety of applications and is something that you should include in your bag of Photoshop tricks.